Okay, good afternoon everyone. Um, I hope you can hear me. Uh, welcome to uh, our latest Monday Market Picks. Or it's the 18th of November. My name is Tilan Vikram Singer. I'm the head of research for Maybank Securities here in Singapore. Um, what a difference a week makes. Uh, the S&P is down about half uh, the uh, post-Trump uh, rally that we saw um, with uh, quite a lot of fear in terms of inflationary pressure. Uh, Asia is actually turning out to be a little bit better with positive sentiment after President Xi uh, met with President Biden uh, in Peru where there was some expectation that China will work with Trump uh, going forward. Now, in our show today, uh, we are going to be uh, really focusing on comeback kids, uh, a bit like uh, what Trump uh, did as well. Um, so basically, we want to focus a little bit more on stocks uh, that are seeing a turn in sentiment, uh, not the least of which is Grab and C, which are way, way off uh, from their uh, pre-pandemic uh, highs. Uh, we've got Husseini who's going to be joining us to take us through that. Uh, we also look at Sencorp Industries uh, which continues its comeback uh, with capital recycling. Uh, we'll have a little bit more of a deep dive there. And then we have Jarek who says that AEM is actually not ready for a comeback yet. Um, and uh, we're going to be focusing a little bit on that as well. Plus, we've got Amirul, the chart guy. He's got two great technical ideas today, a buy as well as a sell. So do stay with us uh, till the end. Now, but first, uh, let's start with uh, Grab, uh, which has been upgraded from a hold to a buy uh, by Husseini. Husseini, welcome to the show. Um, now, Husseini, Grab has had a fairly uh, soft second quarter, uh, but you say the third quarter, it actually made a very strong comeback. Uh, can you give us some uh, context as to why you think so? Sure. Uh, thanks, Sinan. Uh, thanks for having me on the show, and I hope you can hear me. Yes. So, yes, uh, Gra Grab had a relatively soft second quarter, but in third quarter, it made a solid comeback. Uh, supporting factors were plus heavy spending across digital platforms and tourism growth, uh, and those are the Indian segment for that. Uh, second is support from new, uh, new as well as nascent verticals like lending, grab mass, and the strong dissolution. Uh, competition as well was uh, quite helpful with the project and visiting the club. And generated in new terms of fund out by myself. So, that meant uh, one thing of uh, all the techniques, DHC, Jot Water. Uh, third one is GMG, DY, 15% year on year, and 5% quarter on quarter. So, in second quarter, the momentum was slow, but this is never tears. But in third quarter, with 15% year on year, and 5% quarter on quarter, we see that it is now in like. Uh, global tiers in exchange for a 2% ahead of expectation of the uh, incentive as well as reuse and one of the same too. So I would say it was a, a perfect storm for a uh, grant in, in the oil. Mm. But is this really sustainable though? I mean, if, if it is, uh, you know, can you can you see this sort of momentum continuing into 2025? Yeah, we think that's sustainable. Maybe we think, first of all, uh, uh, quarter four, and this company is very much given a lot about water, I would say. Yeah. When they can rotate uh, their film, the strong moment of uh, Trump's water sustained in October and in early part of November, this suggests that uh, a, a positive moment for water water. Uh, what we see in terms of high frequency data is that uh, the river remain strong. With Singapore and Thailand, Polish arrivals in October, we see the almost 17 to 21 percent. And a lot of the disease that we will send them to grab. Gastron is revolution, which is a new growth vertical or new growth area, should have a positive effect uh, on its derailments, business, the unit resource of uh, grab, as well as any advertising business. Uh, as we discussed, competition is also an area of residential development. Uh, also, to notice that uh, company rolled down many products 
in Malaysia, in, in Indonesia, in fourth quarter, uh, or in maybe something, uh, we should have a, we should have a positive effect in fourth quarter and going forward in 2025. So, I want to give back to you and the we see both from the macro, from the premium side, as well as from the competition side, in the new and recent uh, area of the uh, web landing, uh, restaurant reservation, as well as yet more, the mobile country sustainably the g Got it. Now, one of the things that I actually noticed uh, in, in your report is Grab is now actually free cash flow positive. I mean, this was the holy grail for a lot of these internet companies to kind of get to. Uh, what are we expecting in terms of this going forward? Uh, and, and also, uh, you know, when you've been listening to management of Grab, uh, has guidance for Grab changed recently? Yeah, sure. Absolutely, yes. Uh, if we see from the relationship point of view and three terms of the free cash flow point, youngest point of view, uh, a remarkable improvement, I would say. Uh, so, in terms of free cash flow generation, it turned free cash flow positive in second quarter, but in third quarter, the free cash flow generation was 137 million USD, mm. uh, which was a big job. Uh, and uh, from the relationship point of view as well, uh, company has a net cash of around 4.7 million USD. Okay. So, uh, and, and if we try to look on these things, uh, also the idea is that uh, most of the tough money initiatives are organic image and the growth initiatives. So, in terms of the use of cash, uh, for stimulus you know, growth, in my view, will be negative in So, it's a time on this days, it points to a potential capital management initiative uh, based on our sensitivity analysis, assuming that the company pays all of its in cash flow generation as dividends, still returning the cash balance of 4.7 billion, it's a fresh to a dinner mean of 53%. So, what we get is that a strong work momentum plus a 2.3% dividend potential. And now to the second part of the question. In terms of guidance, yes, management gas targets uh, for revenues to grow to now 70 to 80 percent, investment was 40 to 70 percent, uh, and the, on, the management as well as with the uh, adjusting the EBITDA guidance from 250 to 270 billion previously, million USD previously, to now 308 to 380 million US. Okay, got it. Got it. So, yeah, got it. So, got quite a lot of uh, positive uh, going for Grab, uh, which has been upgraded to a buy. Uh, now, let's move on to C, uh, Husseini. Uh, this is another stock that has delivered better than expected in the third quarter. Uh, what were some of the key highlights? Let's start there first. Yeah, sure. So, C as well was a uh, all the uh, so, TQ revenue is due by 31% year on year, and as it that expanded 14 times, uh, BT expand, uh, both revenue and EBITDA BT expectation by wide margin. Uh, Shopee's, uh, which is the e-commerce business, GLB is at a healthy pace of 25% year on year. Uh, Verida, which is the gaming business, uh, the very, very large bookings increase. 24% year on year, and in our view, it is a very comfortable given uh, return to school in third quarter. We hmm. are some uh, momentum slowing down in third quarter, but in fact, what we saw was momentum in fact uh, accelerated into third quarter. Uh, and last but not the least, the digital financial services business, uh, it was a bigger area of positive surprise with the revenue and a bit the up almost 30 to 40 percent on a situation basis, a total of quarter basis, and beating expectation by a wide margin. Um, company similar to Grab, uh, C Limited as well as where the gaming business booking guidance from uh, WG growth previously to now grow at at least 30 percent. 
Got it. Now, there was always uh, a question in terms of competition, particularly from area like Temu and stuff like that. Uh, can you give some color on how competition is going for C and uh, what, how are you thinking about growth for C going forward? Uh, I think from a competition point of view, uh, I would categorize competition as active, but it's stable. Uh, in other words, competition is not available. It is the event to the administration. Uh, and you also see uh, what we have seen in the last, say, six to nine months or last one year, you've got again the approach of the world, seller technology increases. Not just by shopping, but by Lazada, by Kipa as well. Uh, while we go here, but there, or better by October, uh, it took this most tricky, while in Lazada remains highly disciplined. Uh, Timu, which is the new operator in the US markets, what we see is that Timu is not able to go to market and we find that Timu's pricing is not for the Jiju versus the Uh So, that net, I would say competition is not relatively stable. Jiju is not drivers in my view. First, e commerce institution is the same relatively low in Asia at around low to mid. Teams, uh, this is their deal compared to say US or China. Uh, second is that they will also include the statements, which is at the lower end of the other image. And third, digital financial services, uh, as emerging ASEAN is highly underbanked or unbanked. So those are the three key areas of both, in my view, for, uh, for signature. Right, and then you also upgraded the target price for C by around fourteen percent to one hundred and twenty-five US dollars. So, pretty confident of that. Any any key catalysts that we should be watching out for? Yeah, so we did create some of uh, uh, our stimulus uh, and uh, both revenues and adjusted the data by around two to ten percent. Those three to the top of the we gave our SOTP by thirty percent. You know. One day it's falling very steep. Uh, see, the key in our SOTP is not even on the back of increasing STS, while we also will our target valuation by the pulse for the gaming business, as well as digital financial services and business. Now, despite our increasing target by the pulse, uh, we still value the gaming business and the financial services business at around 15 pilot to 50 percent discount in the global business. See, in terms of that is what I see is that the competition in the industry will resume for technical inclusions and the potential opportunities with digital flourish of the Thanks, uh, thanks Husseini. Uh, 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 there is also uh, Singtel, which Husseini has written about in the report as well. Um, we are a bit tight on time, so we are going to uh, leave that for today, but please do have a look at uh, Hussein's comments on Singtel, uh, where he continues to be uh, quite positive and, and has a buy on that stock as well. Now, another company uh, that has been making a very steady comeback is actually Semcorp Industries, uh, a big GLC, which has actually been undergoing restructuring now for a couple of years. Uh, they actually announced last week that they sold Sem Enviro, a waste service provider for about uh, 405 uh, million sing dollars. Now that was actually a 43% premium uh, to book. To us, this actually signifies that SCI is continuing on its journey uh, in unlocking a return on invested capital uh, through their latent assets. Uh, the group will uh, most likely use these sales proceeds to invest further in the energy business. Remember, they actually want to transition their overall business uh, to become a majority green energy provider. They've, uh, they've actually proposed uh, to purchase local power producer Senoco Energy, uh, around 30% of that. Uh, the transaction proceeds uh, from this could actually be used uh, to finance some of that uh, transaction. Now, Krishna, our industrial analyst, uh, uh, estimates that on a pro forma basis, the transaction uh, will be about 13% accretive to EPS excluding the divestment gains and factoring in uh, finance uh, service uh, savings, that'll be uh, accreted by about four to 5% to EPS. Plus, 
overall valuations for SEMCORP is actually pretty cheap. It's about 1.5 times price to book, which is actually below its historical mean. Uh, we are not changing target prices uh, as of yet until uh, the transaction gets completed, but even at our current target price, there's still about 20% upside. So quite, uh, 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 quite positive on this stock uh, currently, so do have a look at this where we have a buy rating. Now, let's turn to another uh, stock which is still waiting for its comeback and that's AEM. I know a lot of, uh, we've had a lot of questions from our audience uh, on AEM. Uh, this is a stock that a lot of uh, investors follow. So let's bring Jarek here. Uh, Jarek, uh, third quarter earnings for AEM was in line with expectations, yet you actually cut target price around 2% and you're keeping the sell call on this truck. Uh, so what's actually driving this? Yeah, okay. But, you know, so we see here, if you look at recently the results and thing, it's still below street's forecast. I mean, even though the album is slightly better, because of the full order from the key customer in Now that would also mean that in will order less from 2025. So basically, I think that, you know, if you look at, I mean, we think that third quarter is the worst. It has bottom, I mean, there's bottom, but if you look at the recovery in terms of earnings, even if it's new customers coming on board, you know, it's still not enough to justify its hiring valuation. Its market cap is close to five years, about well, uh, 400 of 1 million. But even of, even with a mid-bar mix here, we're expecting just close to 20 million of net profits, uh, which is still trading about 20 times, in 20 over times PE forward which is uh, high for Singapore's context. And also, if you look at, uh, in terms of new customers, they are getting one traction with, very, uh, with one customer strongly, uh, which is suspect to be AMD, but others are still taking time to ramp up. So, uh, even though earnings is important, we do think that you know, uh, it is still too early. Uh, basically, they need more time to uh, ramp up others with these new customers to replace or actually uh, replace that of Intel. And, uh, Intel is actually still facing a lack of last year for next year as well. So as a result, we do think that Malaysia still need to catch up uh, over time. Uh, at least I'm not sure enough to justify a buy yet. Uh, more of a, uh, at most a winter, but we still think that there's more downside to come. A bit of sufficient risk. And uh, that's why we still again a sell for a year. Right, so expensive valuations, uh, the new customers are not really filling the hole uh, that the existing customer is kind of leaving behind as well. Uh, any silver linings at all in this talk? Yeah, I think I think there is because I mean, if you look at next year, I mean, uh, we are still look, looking for semicon rebound the next year. We see they make more into the second half of next year from first quarter for first half this year to second half this year, and then now more into second half next year. So I think if there is many a semicon recovery in terms of the demand, then yes, you know, this will actually potentially benefit for PTL rebounding in demand as well as the rent for ultimate customers. So if that happens, then there's a potential rating for AEM. Uh, but we have to see how it goes first. For now, uh, we couldn't see that happening in the near term. Hmm. So we still have to give sell. Got it, got it. And just very quickly, any uh, any preference at all in the tech manufacturing sector that investors should uh, keep an eye on? Sure, I think you know, overall, I think the you know, whole sector has been quite down. That's why we have more of a mutual to uh, damage the, uh, of the sector. But we still consider like Franklin. I think Franklin is one of the all performers this year. Uh, but, you know, of course, you know, if the sector is down, um, if the stock will not do exceptionally well as well. And I think that also going forward, Franklin might also guide for a lower guidance because the whole sector is actually really quite down at the moment. Hmm. Uh, so we do like, we still, we, we do still like Franklin, but such a caution out there that your earnings, uh, forwardly may not be as good as what we previously expect. We expect because of the sudden down beat in the sector over the last one, two months. Okay. So maybe just keep the sector on the radar, but maybe not much, uh, to, to action on. Okay, thanks, Sherik. Um, Amirul, our chart guy, can't be here with us today, but he's got two great ideas. Um, he's got a, a technical buy on uh, Jardine Cycle and Carriage. Uh, he thinks that uh, this, after the stock's been trending sideways over the uh, last few weeks, there is some potential for a breakout there, so do have a look at that. He also has a technical sell on Cetrium. Um, he thinks that uh, the sort of uh, uh, sort of run up that the stock has had uh, is kind of starting to run out of steam. So uh, most likely, uh, the best course of action right now is to take some profit from that stock. 
Uh, in terms of uh, announcements that are coming out, uh, quite a few inflation and GDP numbers that are coming out. GDP is out on the 25th of November, inflation is out on the 22nd, and also bank lending, something that we are keeping a very close eye on as we close this year, uh, is out on the 29th. Uh, apart from that, we've got a great event for you uh, coming out this Thursday uh, where we have Hagbin, uh, Anand, our uh, regional strategist, and also myself uh, talking about um, you know, what to expect in Southeast Asia in terms of winners as well as risks, uh, particularly in this new Trump world as well as uh, what's happening in China as well. So don't, don't miss out. Uh, registration is free. It's right there or using that QR code. It's a virtual seminar during lunch, so do, uh, do join us uh, for that. Uh, with that, uh, we are right out of time. So thank you so much for joining us as usual and see you next week. Have a profitable trading week.